everyone, nice to meet you here. During today's short lecture, I will briefly explain about another very common health condition, which is the diabetes. Diabetes is really popular among the whole world population. I will also introduce three different types of diabetes. Now, in Australia, 1.2 million people suffer from diabetes, which equals to around 5 to 6 percentage of the whole Australian population. Therefore, it's really important for us to understand this condition and take proper actions to prevent it. Um, we're going to talk about the pathophysiology causes and relevant nursing treatments. Diabetes actually really causes heavy financial burden and emotional stress. And every year, government and healthcare facilities have to donate a lot of money on treating this condition. In regards to the pathophysiology, that means actually what happens in the body which actually cause this condition. So, um, so let's have a talk about the pathophysiology. Now, we know that once we consume food, there are different types of nutrition that we consume. This include the fat, protein, sugar, and carbohydrate. Now, carbohydrate, once it is digested, it can also convert into the sugar. So sugar is actually the main resource of energy for the body to use. Now, the sugar, once it is um, digested, it has to be absorbed into the blood from your small intestine and then carried inside the blood and then the sugar can um, shift into your body cells to produce energy for the body to use. Our sugar inside the blood is called the glucose and the glucose needs to be kept within a normal level. So the normal glucose level in our blood should be between 4 to 8 millimole per liter, doesn't matter we eat or not eating. If we have an empty stomach, um, this is called a fasting glucose. So the fasting glucose level should be between 4 to 6 millimole per liter. So if you are not eating, have an empty stomach, if your sugar level is above 6, that means you have a risk of getting diabetes. Um, generally, even after you um, take the food, even after you consume the meal, your sugar level should still um, below 8 millimole per liter. So it is always should be maintained within the normal level. And if it goes, now if the glucose level actually goes above the normal range, um, then this person will have uh, the risk of diabetes. And if it's continuously above the normal level, continuously above normal level, this person will, uh, um, is, that means this person is suffered, suffering diabetes. Now, so let's have a look. Um, there are two different hormones actually produced by the body to regulate the glucose level. Now, these two hormones are called insulin and glucagon. Now, these two hormones actually are produced by one organ, which is called the pancreas. Pancreas is the organ which stay, which actually which is located behind your stomach and underneath your liver. Now, this organ on this on the pancreas there. There is a cluster of cells which is called the islets of Langerhans. Now, islets of Langerhans include a group of cells. There's one cell called beta cell. Beta cell actually produce insulin, which can reduce the glucose level when, when it is too high. Another cell is called the alpha cell. Alpha cell can produce glucagon and it can increase the glucose level once it is too low. So, how do this hormones work. We know that there is another organ which is called the liver. Liver um, actually can um, store the excessive amount of glucose um, once we don't need it. Now, when we consume the sugar, yeah, if, there are two, if there are actually excessive amount of sugar, the sugar in the blood will then actually be stored inside the liver. Um, this stored, this, this stored um, form of sugar is called the glycogen. So the sugar, so once the body have the blood has too much sugar, the sugar will then go into the liver and then store as glycogen. 
And once the glucose level is low, the glycogen in the liver will be converted back into glucose and then to produce energy. Um, so once our glucose level actually is high, is high, now the pancreas uh, will produce insulin, more insulin, and insulin um, can actually um, shift the excessive amount of glucose into the liver, into the liver to store as glycogen. So the glucose level will drop, will drop. And once the glucose level actually is low, is low, now the alpha cell on the pancreas is going to produce glucogen, glucogen, and it can actually um, make the liver to release the glycogen, to make the glycogen actually convert it back into the glucose in the blood to increase the glucose level to produce energy. So these two hormones actually continuously work and help the glucose to always maintain in the normal range. So this is how it works. Now for diabetic patients, diabetic patients, the beta cell, the pancreas, the beta cell on the pancreas doesn't work properly. Um, so it cannot actually produce enough insulin. So the insulin cannot be produced enough to balance the glucose, to control the glucose. Therefore, the glucose always stay in a higher amount. So, so that's why. So diabetes means that um, either no insulin or not enough insulin is produced um, for the body to uh, reduce the glucose level. That's why the glucose always stay in a higher amount. So the main symptom, the main symptom of diabetic patient is a high, high level of glucose above the normal range. So let's then talk about different types of diabetes. Now we have different types. Now we have three types. The first type is called type 1, type 1, and then type 2. And another type is called the gestational diabetes. Now type 1, let's talk about type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is actually an autoimmune disease. Now we talked about autoimmune disease in the past. That means your own immune system actually um, attack your own body organs to damage your own body organs. So in, in the normal, normal people, their immunity should help their body to fight against the pathogens, to defend for their body, to protect body from getting sick. However, for autoimmune disease, people who have autoimmune disease, their own immune system is confused. So it, instead of protecting your own body, it actually attacks your own, um, it, it, instead of protecting your body, actually attack your own body organs to make it damage. So for type 1 diabetes, um, the person's own immunity, the immune system actually attack their own pancreas, pancreas and damage the beta, beta cells, damage beta cells. So, so the beta cell cannot produce insulin at all. So for type 1 diabetes, the person who have type 1 diabetes don't, don't have any insulin produced because of, uh, their own immunity actually attack their own beta, beta cell on the pancreas and make it totally destroyed. So no insulin or very little insulin can be produced. So type 1 is actually more, very, is very serious. So people who have type 1 diabetes have to rely on insulin therapy um, whole life, unfortunately. And normally type 1 diabetes is more related to the genetic factor, more related to the family history. Sometimes the other reasons could also cause it, like virus or something. It's still unknown. The reason is still not fully known. And another thing is that type 1 diabetes normally happens for young people. So it's called the juvenile diabetes. So normally people under 30 years of age, they have much higher chance of getting type 1 diabetes compared to other age groups. Type 1 diabetes actually um, is very less, um, have less um, chance of, to develop. Um, so um, compared to type 2, type 2 diabetes is actually more common than type 1. Type 1 only mostly happens for young people and the chance of getting type 1 is really, really low. 
So among 100 people who have diabetes, only 5 to 10 people have type 1. And another 90 to 95 people within these 100 people who have diabetes, actually they are type 2. So type 1 only account for like a small percentage of the whole population. Type 2 is more common. So type 1 is an autoimmune disease. Now let's then talk about type 2. Now type 2 diabetes actually is more common than type 1. So 90% um, 90, 90 of diabetes, diabetic patients, they are type 2. And type 2 is more related to the environmental factors. Um, so if people like consume like a large amount of sugar all the time and have a poor diet, um, no exercise, now this kind of people, or obesity, um, this kind of people, um, easy to develop type 2. Type 2 actually can be related to both genetic factor and also the environmental factors. So both environment and uh, um, family history can all um, cause type 2 diabetes. And type 2 diabetes actually um, normally occurs for people over 50 years of age, normally for older adults, and it doesn't develop um, for young people. So type 1 mostly happens for young adults um, below 30 years of age, and type 2 normally happens for people over 50 years of age. They're very different. Type 1 is autoimmune disease, so there is no any insulin produced by the pancreas. However, for type 2, type 2 diabetes, we can call it insulin-resistant diabetes. Insulin-resistant. So what means insulin-resistant? That means actually your body cells doesn't and respond well to insulin. So the pancreas can still produce some insulin. However, the insulin cannot um, shift the glucose into the body cells to produce energy. So we know that the glucose in the blood must actually shift into the body cells and then produce energy. However, for type 2 diabetes, the body cells actually become resistant to the insulin. So it doesn't open the door for the insulin to enter. So ins insulin cannot actually bring the glucose into the, bo into the body cells. Um, so this is called insulin resistant. And uh, that, that's why when, when, patient, when people have insulin resistant, now their pancreas has to work harder to try to produce more insulin, more insulin, uh, because, the, because insulin actually can't work can't the body actually resist to the insulin so the pancreas work even harder to produce more insulin um then actually in the long run the pancreas gets really tired and then less and less insulin will be produced so type 2 diabetes actually the insulin still work however the body is resistant to it. the body cells doesn't respond well to the insulin so this is called insulin resistant Type 2 diabetes actually um, is a chronic condition. It, it can last for years and years. And people with type 2 diabetes can, um, can still live a normal life, but like it lasts for many, many years. But it actually slowly deteriorates, they will slowly deteriorate, and the condition can get worse with age. Um, type, because we said type 1 diabetes um, has no any insulin as well. So type 1 diabetic patients must rely on insulin infusion for whole life. However, type 2 diabetes, um, there's still some insulin, but insulin doesn't work properly because the body actually resistant to insulin. So type 2 diabetes um, don't necessarily need insulin. So for some people, type 2 diabetes can be controlled by proper diet um, and can be controlled by medications. Um, so, it, so some people with type 2, they don't need insulin. Um, infusion. So it's less serious than type 1, less serious than type 1. People can um, reduce their sugar amount inside the diet, keep a healthy diet, low sugar, low fat, and have more exercise and take medications so they can still live a nice life with type 2. Now another type of diabetes is called the gestation, um, gestational diabetes. Now gest gestational diabetes is the diabetes only happen for pregnant women. So when women get pregnant, now because the placenta, um, placenta will produce some hormones for the baby to like to develop. Now these hormones can affect the glucose level in the blood and make the um, uh, make the patient's glucose increase. 
but this only happens during the pregnancy period. So gestational diabetes actually only happens for a short period of time, only during the pregnancy. Um, um, and then during this pregnancy period, you now um, they um, the pancreas um, is affected. You know, like they um, the the hormones actually in the body produced by the placenta actually can affect the function of the pancreas to produce um, the insulin and it will cause the glucose level to increase and after the baby is delivered after pregnancy finished the glucose level could come back to normal range still however um, once the woman um, suffered from the gestational diabetes in later life she will have a higher chance to get the type 2 um, diabetes I mean um, because their their body could already start to build up the insulin resistance habit so um, gestational diabetes well, uh, for the pregnant woman is, is only for the pregnancy period however people who actually suffer from this diabetes have a higher chance than other people to develop um, type 2 diabetes in a later life still um, so these are the so these are three different types of diabetes so I hope now you can have better understanding about these types now how do we treat diabetes like I said um, once we have like diabetes uh, we should always keep like the low fat um, low sugar um, diet so don't take enough too much sugar and once people know how to actually um, diagnose this condition so how we know that we have diabetes or not now normally there are three symptoms that people will show when they have diabetes now these three symptoms uh, include getting very thirsty so you always have the willing to drink more water gets really hungry, always want to eat more, eat more. Because um, the body has no insulin or the insulin doesn't work properly. So the glucose cannot be converted into energy and people always feel hungry, always thought, okay, I, I need more energy, but I don't have energy. So always consume food. However, the glucose still, the sugar can still not be changed into energy. So people actually, even they eat more, they will still lose weight. They will still feel hungry. So the three main symptoms of diabetes include the thirsty, like uh, thirsty, always want to drink water, thirsty, and hungry, excessive hungry, always want to eat food, and um, then weight loss, weight loss, even eat a large amount of food, drink a lot of water, still their glucose cannot produce energy, so still they will lose weight, and the body has to burn the fat burn the fat to produce energy but because the glucose, the sugar cannot be converted into energy so the body has to use the fat to other nutrition to produce energy that's why the, um, people will lose weight so the three main symptoms and then to prevent diabetes really remember keep a low sugar, low fat diet and have more exercise um, yeah and this is very important and also like constantly monitor your glucose level um, regularly monitor your glucose level and if you find that your glucose is higher than the normal range uh, especially higher higher than eight um, then you have to actually go to the doctor and then seek more treatments to prevent the further deterioration um, thank you very much for your um, concentration thank you